The screen is very nice. I really wish that they had just taken this screen and boop, plopped it into this chassis. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Tech. This is a video that I've wanted to make ever since I found out that there was a new MacBook Air coming with a lower wattage Y-series CPU. How does it compare performance-wise to the old MacBook Air? The 2015 and up was using a fifth generation Intel Core U-series CPU. Mine is the late 2015, early 2016, so it has the i5 5250U, 1.6 gigahertz base clock, and it's a dual core 15 watt CPU. This new one is the eighth generation i5 8210Y. Y-series, which are typically a five watt CPU, but Apple has boosted it to seven watt and added a fan. And they have their own T2 security chip, which is supposed to improve some performance, encryption, data IO, and some HEVC encoding. So first of all, let's just wake them and see which wakes up first. I have noticed that waking the new MacBook from sleep takes a couple of seconds longer than the old one. You probably just noticed it there. The screen does is slower to come on. Now one of the first tests I want to do is the Cinebench R15 test. This does a rendering test uh, for CPU performance as well as an Opal OpenGL graphics test. There's no apps running. I've made sure that I have all my browsers closed. I have all my mail closed. Everything is closed. The only thing that's running on both these machines is macOS itself, its background tasks, and Cinebench R15. There's no point in starting them at the same time, so I'm just going to start running the CPU test on each and we'll see what kind of performance we get out of them. Now they're both dual core, but they have hyper threading, so they have the equivalent of four logical threads. This is interesting how the, the non-retina display is noticeably larger, so obviously this renders in a native format, and that's just a good example of, of with the pixel quadrupling, how much of a size difference there is. Looks like the eighth generation Y series is pulling ahead, even though I started this one first. Should be curious, from a raw CPU performance, I will be impressed if this performs a higher score than the old one. Something to note is that the fan has kicked on on the new one, but the old one is completely silent still. Alright, looks like the 8th gen is going to finish first. It's almost done. And there we go. We got a Cinebench score of 290. And the... Old MacBook Air still has two rendering lines to complete. There we go, and it got a 250. Now for real world performance, that's not that huge of a difference. Now this one uses 15 watts and this one uses seven. So that's how much of, a, of an efficiency incre increase has happened over the last couple of years, where 290 Cinebench versus a 250. So this is the Intel Core i5-5250U at 1.6 gigahertz, and this one is the Intel Core i5-8210Y at 1.6 gigahertz. Now let's do the graphics performance. Uh, 2016 MacBook has the Intel HD 6000 graphics, and the 2018 has Intel UHD 617. Again, this is just marketing numbers. We're gonna see here which one performs better. The other thing about how they're calling this one an i5, that's the that's also Intel marketing. Really, this is a Core M5. This one has a real i5 mobile in it. This one is a M5, but they've rebranded it as an i5, and Intel changed that branding last year. Because why? Because M5 was getting a bad reputation as a low-powered, expensive chip, and they were just trying to change the perception of it. So this is the most powerful Y chip I've ever seen, and also it's abnormal that it's paired with a fan. So this is performing very well for a Y series CPU, but when you look at the price to performance, the old model had that magic ability of almost being a MacBook Pro, where you're just getting a little bit of a worse screen, but you had almost the power of a Pro device on this one. It's really skewed more towards the premium, ultra designer look and feel of the MacBook, where you're sacrificing some of the performance. On the old 2016 MacBook, I got a 25.09 frames per second. And on the new one, ooh, rough. We only got 13. 
Yikes. Now I do have this one scaled up to a 1680 by 1050 resolution. I'm gonna change the scaling on this and see how it affects the frames per second. I'm gonna change it to the equivalent of 1440 by 900, which is the same as what this one is. Quickly change my scaling back to default. And now we'll run this graphics test again. Okay, and the scaling numbers are back and we get a pathetic 13.34 frames per second. Yikes, that is not very good. Now I do have the performance monitoring set on them so they both show that they're idling using almost no power right now. So I'll let the thermals on this one cool down a bit and I'll try it one more time. But as of right now, graphics performance seems to be half as good in OpenGL tests on the new one versus the old. That is not a good position to be in when we're talking about a laptop that now costs at least $500 more than the old one. I let it cool down and I ran it another time. 13.4 frames per second, that is pathetic. Ooh, Ultra HD 617 is not very good. That's due to the seven watt Y series CPU. It cannot compete with a CPU that's even three generations old. Ah, that's sad. One of the other things that I've been wondering is for app loading, something like iMovie, which I load quite open and close quite a bit, I want to see uh, how closely do they compare. Three, two, one. Whoops, I, f I touched too far. That is the problem with force touch, is that if you press too hard, it goes into that extra mode and it doesn't work out. Three, two, one. About the same, ever so slightly, ever so slightly different. So, so far when it comes to usability, they both seem very much on par performance wise. Every now and then this does something a little bit faster or slower than this one, but if you even it out, I would say that they turn out to be about the same speed. Remember, the graphics may be slower on this one because it has to drive a 2560 by 1600 display and this one only has to deal with 1440 by 900. Even though this is taking those pixels and scaling it, it still has to render all of them out. <sighs> still though, for the premium that they're asking for this, it is not worth it. The small improvements to the trackpad Subjectively, the keyboard is not worth it to me. The screen is very nice. I really wish that they had just taken this screen and boop, plopped it into this chassis. That would have been the MacBook Air that everyone wanted. Give it a slightly uh, newer generation CPU in the same U-series 15 watt processor, give it a retina display, and everyone would have been happy. It's such a hard pill to swallow that they want $1,500 plus for this in Canada in the US, it is $1,200 starting price. I got this for $999 Canadian. So every now and then, its typical price now is $999 for this MacBook Air. On sale in the US, you could probably get it for $899, $799. It is a way better value uh, for essentially the same performance. The difference is in the screen. It's the color accuracy is quite a bit different. This has 100% RGB, this has about 50%, as well as this is a retina display with a glass coating on the front, and this is just a semi-gloss TN panel that does color shift as you adjust it. On this one, there is no color shift when you adjust, or very minimal. So this is where I have to go on a bit of a rant because the way that they've positioned this product in the marketplace, it is supposed to be a successor to the MacBook Air, but it is no more powerful. So that's the problem is that if you're a power user who loved the MacBook Air form factor, there's no place for you to go. Refuse to update the MacBook Pro without the touch bar. So it has a seventh generation CPU and it has the second generation butterfly keys, which I don't like. Seventh generation CPUs are not that powerful. Compared to 8th generation, it was a major increase in performance when we went to 8th gen because most of the U-series CPUs, like the one in this, went up to a quad-core. 
Uh, this one is still a dual core. The only quad core 15 watt CPUs that Apple offers are in the $2,000 plus 13 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. So, I mean, they have calculated that decision to be that, well, if you're just your normal person who's writing documents and surfing the web, this is a perfectly adequate laptop for you. You don't need quad core power. Everyone should just buy an Air. But if you care about performance, video rendering, um, getting a lot of power and performance out of your laptop, the new Air just is not gonna cut it, I'm sorry to say. So, ah, you're forced into the MacBook Pro line if you want to have superior performance to your old MacBook Air. All right guys, so there's other things that I could compare like storage performance and things of that nature, but at this point really they're so fast. They're both on PCIe uh, NVMe based memory. They get well over 1000 megabytes per second uh, write and read speeds, so it becomes irrelevant once you get up to that speeds about uh, what it does for performance of the system. The Cinebench score was really what I was most important, uh, really most interested in trying, and I can see now that this new machine is no faster and in some ways slower than the old one. All right guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.